Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today we're taking a look at 3D photos. I've been seeing these around more and more and uh, they've become a very popular thing for weddings and a number of different occasions. But the idea behind the 3D photo is you're taking a 2D photo and you are breaking it into layers that are in Z space and moving independently of each other. So this is what we've got. And it's a really simple idea. We've got two different layers here. Um, my son's in the foreground, and then we've got a background. And of course, one is changing shape. The other one is pushing back in Z-space. And let's get started. To begin with, we're in Photoshop. And you can see we took a number of different pictures here. And let me go ahead and click a few of these off so you can kind of make sense of what's going on here. All right, we started off with this picture, which was just my son posing on the back of the couch here. Um, they say not to let your children climb on the furniture, but, well, there he is. Anyway, he's got a nice pose going on here. Um, he's really into Spider-Man right now. So um, he's posed like this, and we decided we're going to work with that picture. And then we started off with this picture, too, um, because I had to... I cut off his foot in the other picture. If you take a look at it, you can see his foot has kind of disappeared into the couch there. So we had to work with that. And then eventually after I cut him out and put them all together, that's what I ended up with. We got a little motion blur on the fingers here because he was wavering around and jumping and it wasn't easy to balance on the back of the couch. Now, I've got my background picture, which is just a picture of the balcony here all by itself. And we've got kind of an upward angle here. Actually, it's a low angle looking up. So um, that's what we've got for our Photoshop. Now, I've got two different layers here. I kept them separate. Anything that you want to animate in After Effects, you should keep as separate layers. And I'm just going to save this as a Photoshop document. Now that I've got this saved as a PSD, um, I'm going to move it into After Effects. What I want to do is I want to right click on it and I'm just going to go open with and I'm going to go After Effects. And this is probably the most important step here for everything to work well. Since it's a Photoshop document, it's got a bunch of different layers and I want to maintain the layer sizes and I want it to be a composition. I think by default it shows up with footage, so you're going to want to change that up to composition, retain layer sizes. And then make sure that it's editable so we can go into those layers and click OK. Okay, now that I've opened this up in After Effects here, I've got my composition, um, which was originally my Photoshop document. I've got it down in my uh, layers area, and I moved it from my project area down here. And now if I'm going to double click on this, open up my composition, I can see the two different layers that are going on. I've got the foreground layer, and then I've got the background layer. And what we want to do is we want to animate these independently of each other. So, at this point, I'm going to take the two layers, and uh, we can do this very simply in 3D space, or we can kind of like, uh, we could fake the 3D if we wanted to. Uh, let's do this, uh, let's do this with the 3D though. We're going to go ahead and we're going to check the 3D box for both layers. Okay, so now that I've got that, I can go ahead and move these in Z space. So I go to the foreground layer. I'm going to take that, and in Z-Space, I'm going to move it forward. Actually, let's start with moving it back a little bit, and let's move it up where he's kind of starting off. Now, the other layer, we're going to position back a little bit. I'm going to take that and move it back like this, so it's got some separation from the foreground. And then we're going to scale it, so I'm going to hit S here. And I'm going to scale this up and give me a little extra room to work with here. There we go. And now if we wanted to take a look at this to see what the separation is, let's go ahead and add a camera in here. If we go Layer, New, and we're going to add a camera. And we're just going to leave all the default settings here. Click OK. And uh, with my camera tool, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to hit C until I get my actual camera. And you can see now that we've got that separation between the two. There's a little space created between them okay, as I rotate them. I'm going to snap that back to where it was. And now we can get started with the animating part. Uh, we're going to go to the foreground first, since this is already pushed back in Z-space. And actually, um, I can take him and move him back a little bit further here. So I just hit V to switch back to my uh, pointer tool for my camera. 
and we're going to move him up and let's move him back a little bit more. This is going to be more of a, a dramatic move here as he does this. And um, let's go ahead and bring the, um, to begin with, let's have the front layer forward just behind him. So they're right next to each other, right there. Okay, and they're going to separate as the animation goes on. So let's go ahead and drop down both layers here. And we could do this a number of ways. We could go ahead and uh, we could uh, shift click on both of them. So I hold shift and I click on these and I hit P for position. And I can go ahead and hit the stopwatch for these. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out. Oh, let's see here. About 10. We'll start off with 15 seconds. Let's go 10 seconds to begin with. Okay. And now I'm going to take the position, and this is where I want to click off one or the other. I'm going to take the position of my son at the 10 second mark, and I'm going to move him forward. Uh, let's go the other way here. Move him forward in Z space. So you can see he's gradually getting larger here. Okay, and keep going. And there we go. Now I'm going to also take him and I'm going to move him down in Y space so it looks like he's actually coming down a bit. And we're going to take him and move him forward even more. There we go. It's going to be a dramatic movement this time. All right, now with the background, we're going to take the background at the 10 second marker, same exact spot as where we were before. And I'm going to take this, and we had already resized this so that it would fit. We're going to take it back right up until where it's touching the the canvas here, like so. And we're going to also take that and we're going to move it up. And it looks like we are going to have to resize it. So we might as well take this and move it back a little bit more. And then we're going to um, scale that up while we're at it. There we go. And we got a little bit of a movement going on here. Okay, so this is way more dramatic. This is super Spider-Man-ish. So now we've got this where he's up top here and he's coming down and he's getting larger and coming forward. And we've got that movement, that 3D kind of perspective that's going on here. Now when you play it through, if I just hit the RAM preview, it moves nice and gradually here. Okay. Um, and it's supposed to be subtle with 3D photos. I mean, you could make it more dramatic if you're making like an intro or something like that. You could make it very dramatic, but most 3D photos are pretty, you know, subtle the way that they move. Almost enough where it's like, wait a minute, that picture is actually moving. You know, it kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit here. Okay, you got the idea. Now, if I wanted to speed this up very easily, I could take both my layers. Um, again, I'm just going to shift click on both of them since I got keyframes in the same spots on the foreground and the background layer. I'm going to hit P again for position. And then I can just take these two keyframes here, um, highlight both of them, and I could adjust those so maybe this animation has taken place over just a couple seconds. So I hit my RAM preview here, and now you can see as this goes through, it's a lot more of a dramatic movement here. Okay? So. At that point, I have taken a 2D photo, and I have made it 3D, and I've animated it in Z space, and we changed the scale of both of the background layers, and uh, we got them moving opposite of each other, and we created this, uh, this nifty little effect here, okay? Well, excellent. I hope that you get a chance to mess around with this and see what you can come up with with uh, some different variations of the settings. Um, you could put in like a blur on this. You could put in a Gaussian blur on the background too if you wanted um, so that uh, it creates a little bit more of more more of like a motion effect on it. Um, if it was moving fast enough, I suppose I could add motion blur on here and we could get that going too. So it blows, blurs the two layers here. Um, but a very neat, very effective, and uh, kind of a trendy effect that's going on right now. Well, thanks for joining us again for another episode of Red Hawk Media. Bye. <laughs>